station in Avelina. Avelina. And with the German they, troops. With the German troops. And they fell in love. And she's going to tell you a little bit about the difficulties they had getting to Canada. Well, Brittany, we had a grand chat before supper, and I was teasing her. So Brittany lived, she was lived in Holland, completely different countries during wartime. And so Brittany met her husband in Holland. No, I'm lying. Met her a man in Holland who came back to Canada and wrote to Brittany twice a day, every day. So you cannot accuse her of chasing him. He chased her. Am I right on that? Yes, right. And she ended up coming to Canada and she married the love of her life. And his name was Morley Payne. Brittany is uh, 92 years young and Anna is 95 years young. They will speak to you about their teenage years, the ages you were during World War II. And I'd like you to ask questions, okay? Now remember, these, these girls and boys are going to Juno Beach off the coast of France. To Normandy? To Normandy, mm -hmm. yes. Patrick has been there before. There's a grandson of Patty McLaughlin in the audience. You know him very well. You know him, yes. And we had Mrs. Scott, who was here before. Yeah. Yes, and she was a war bride. What were you allowed to do and what couldn't you do? No, not very much. You had to do what the Germans told you, and you just just had to had to do what they said. And you were always scared. You couldn't talk to anybody because you never knew who was going to tell on you, and then you probably went to a concentration camp or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you allowed outside at night? Oh no. Well, in the last half year of the war, we had to be in at eight o'clock at night, and we had to get only get or go out at seven o'clock in the morning. And everything was dark. I mean, there were no street lights. There was no no light show. Well, we had no electricity anymore anyway. But in the last half year of the war. So what did you do for entertainment? Oh, no, could sit at home. <laughs> sit at home. <laughs> and go to the farm and beg for money, uh, beg for food. That's all we did, really. For four or five five years. Yeah. Well, more the last the half the last half the last year was the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But did the Germans you know bought an awful lot of stuff that you couldn't buy coffee anymore. We drank hot tea that were dried leaves, just strawberry leaves and blueberry leaves, and we dried those, and that's what we had for tea. And coffee, well, we really didn't have anything anymore. No, no, no. Anybody else? Anybody else have questions before? And we can bounce back and forth. I was going to separate these lovely ladies tonight, but I thought as a team effort, it would be come in. We, you can yeah. bounce back and forth. There's lots of time. Oh, yeah. Right. There's no curfews for these kids. Okay. No curfews like there was during war time. <laughs> yes? To come to um, yeah. there, Patrick would like to ask you a question. Please. Your family took a huge risk when they were... Pardon? Your, your family yeah, took a very big risk oh, yeah. when you were hiding oh, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, Jewish yeah. family. If you were caught, that's a For sure, yes. Yeah. And um, whenever they had to leave the house, do you know if they survived the war? Did yeah, you ever they, contact after? Yeah, they, they survived the war, yeah. They moved to Chile after the war. That's where they lived. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You wait, did you not have a friend? You befriended one of these Jer the Jewish families? No, no, not really. Like I mean, they would just came into the house. And oh, oh, but it was your friends that asked about them, but you never told. No, I never, no, no, I never told, she never no, told. I never told anybody uh, if there were them. Because my girlfriend asked after the war, were they Jews? And I said, yeah. And no. I didn't tell her even. And that was my bosom girlfriend. Your bosom you girlfriend. You didn't tell anybody anything. No. Smart lady. Yeah. You, kept, you, kept, you kept a grand secret yeah. for survival for those yeah. Jewish families. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anybody else before we? And we can go back and forth with questions. I mean, there's so many. There's, yeah. There's, yeah. These are two. Uh, yes, go ahead, John. Your story is so longer than this. Yeah. Your story is longer than the story. Yeah, and we were in four five. So many so many remembrances. Yeah. That after a while you yeah. you don't forget them. No, you but forget. they're there. I didn't forget anyone. Anyway. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no, no, no. I I remember quite a quite a bit. Yeah. But I don't know if yeah. I am able to. Mr. McDonald's gonna ask Brittany a question, then we're gonna chat with when you. When did you move to Canada? 
in Brooklyn in 1947. 1947. And I'm married here. And you got married here? Yeah. Have you been back to Holland? Yeah, no, I went quite, quite a few times. Quite Maybe a few times. Maybe 10 times or so when my mother was still living. Yeah, I went over quite a bit then. Yeah. yeah. Still have family in mm -hmm. Holland? No, not anymore. No. no. I'm the only one. Yeah. yeah. So. Anna, and Anna's, I meant to say that Anna's son, Alf, did something. Because I was listening to Aurel, who now passed on, who claims you were the love of his life. Yes. And that he learned to say, I love you, and in Italian, with a dictionary, when he was... When he was uh, dating you? Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Sweeping you off your feet. <laughs> can you tell me? So can when you? The, oh. the, the war was going on, and the English, French, they were coming from Africa with the English. They were invading Italy? Yeah, well, okay. they, they were trying to reach the German that were in Italy in Sicily. So they were trying to overcome the sea from Africa, following the Germans. When they arrived there, because there was a war, different, and uh, we were living in this uh, place, Avellino, the name of the place, where my mother had a house, and we used to stay there. Uh, very, very nice. And the German was with us. Because in my own town, there was a city in La Caserma, where they sold the, 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 the... An army base. Well, a headquarters? Exactly. A headquarters. The German, when the German came down, down to Italy, towards Naples, they stopped there. <coughs> in my own town. So, of course, when we saw that the German were in the Caserma, that's how you call it. Caserma. They used to go out every day. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Two, two, by two, two, by two. But we will not go out as far as women are concerned, or even German. School would close, of course. But the Germans stay there until the English coming from Africa reaches Sicily and then Italy itself. We did not move because the Germans were there. And at the same time, the English and the Americans were trying to come in. Finally, the day arrived when they uh, take our own little town. The bomb time, many people died. There was a market, many people died. But fortunately, we were lucky to have, I should say my mother, had a farm in the village, very close. And we all went there. She said, get the suitcase, all of you, because we were seven children at home. Get what you want, put it in, and we go to the farm. And we waited for the German, the, the English to arrive. So that's what we did. We had the, the bombing, then very many people ran from town out to the farm where we were, trying to get a glass of water, or keep on rolling toward the north of Italy. You see, try to remember who had the house, it could stay there. You had you know, the farm, you had food, you had people, you had water. Not running water, but you had water. So when the day arrived, fortunately, and this uh, bombing happened the 14th of September. I don't remember the year, it must be 1945. And uh, the soldier, because of the German, retreated, stealing anything they could on the way. Going to small house, taking anything, the jewelry, food, live animal, anything at all, as long they could carry whatever, arm, anything at all. 
My mother was with us, and she prepared food, you know. <clears throat> we were lucky. So we come down for one day, knowing all the dead down in town. We were on the mountain, like they were down in the valley. And when the, the soldier arrived, the next morning, when we got up and we opened the window, and we looked at the field, all the tents, the American and the head of rhyme, a big celebration. So a few of us there to go down this, uh, outside the, you know, the house, and, and the, they were very, very nice. And they gave us, uh, what you call the candy with the food? Rice savers. Lifesavers? The candy? No, I don't know. <laughs> green, green, red, and just. Lifesavers, you know, yes. With the hole in the middle. The 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 they yeah. used to get this uh, and uh, a bar of soap. A bar of soap. Uh, candy. Chewing and gum. They were so nice. Chewing gum. Chewing gum? Yeah. Chewing gum? Yeah. Chewing gum? Well, probably, I didn't get any. I got the soap. I got some. You got some. Oh, yes, they put it in. Big yeah, treats back then. Mm -hmm. So the American and English arrived, and they established themselves in our town, in the caserma. Now, when you say Americans and English, was Arel among them? No, not oh, that. Not no. yet. Okay, he's coming up in the story. <laughs> He comes later. Okay. But then they arrived and they took over in a sense. Mm -hmm. Bef before helping people uh, hurt and, uh, you know, that type of help. Then the, the Negro, the America mostly were Negro. Okay. And we, especially the young one, we had never seen a Negro. Imagine they see this huge men, beautiful youth and everything, but they were so helpful. I tell you, I mean, they were, I have a very nice souvenir of them. So we start living again. We started living again. Then the American, those were the American. Then they left, and the Canadian and English came and took over the place, took over the caserma, mm -hmm. and start working with the people. They wanted to have the help from the people. So if you know English, we like to hire you. But many, oh, okay. they, didn't, they didn't like this language. First of all, the language. They wanted to hire people who could be interpreters? Is that what you mean? So they okay. could help them the Canadians to run the country, right? And establish themselves there, and that's what the world was. Oh. I, didn't, I didn't see you then, because <laughs> it just arrived, and I wasn't allowed out. All the young girls, especially, you stay in. <laughs> Same deal in your country, <laughs> Same deal in your country. <laughs> But then, I mean, through the year, of course, the, the, the troops began to know the people, learn some could speak French, so they could do uh, And uh, through this uh, connection that the government had with the people, or I should say the, the main people in the people, they asked. Uh, it says, uh, they used to go house to house. Is there anyone that speaks English? Very few spoke English. But they, they learned that my sister, Teresa, my only sister, uh, spoke, was a teacher of English. When they knew that, they came home to the Arthur and Aurel together to ask if she would work for them. Uh, okay, so Aurel went to your house to check out your sister because she understood English? Yes. To work for them. So, oh, I get it now. So I they came every time. It's the true time, of course, they met the rest of the family, they start talking, 
maybe a word or two, just a yes or something like that. There. It, 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 it stayed uh, quite a few months in, uh, in my hometown. But the name, of the name of the place was Avellino. The word is uh, like a Latin word, uh, the name of a fruit. And what do you call them? Hazelnuts. In English, you call them hazelnuts. In Italian, it's Avella, the name of the fruit. Avella, Latin word. And from the word, they gave the name to the town. Avellino. That's the name of my How did you get to Canada? Did you fly or oh, did I you? No, 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 yeah, yeah. And where did you leave and where did you arrive from? Yeah. And where did you arrive? You left from? We left, we left mm -hmm. from Amsterdam. Right. And then we came into Montreal. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in Montreal, I was by myself. Oh, yes. And I took the train to Bathurst. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And you were kind of scared, really, because, well, I could talk English, so not fluently, maybe, but because my husband had said, he didn't want to have a blind date with somebody who couldn't talk English. <laughs> so <laughs> that was it. Yeah. So we could write one another, we wrote yeah. one another in English. Yeah. 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 How long was that boat trip from Amsterdam to Montreal? Oh gosh, I think that was about uh, oh, it was it, uh, 12 days probably. And I remember you telling me about a lot of rides that didn't, they didn't last long, did they? No, no. Some of them fell with uh, I fell in love with some of the crew in the boat. They didn't want to stay here. I think they stay. I don't know because they went to different places, so I don't know. I never tell them anymore. And a lot went back to their country. Yeah, people left. Some of them left. Yeah. Oh, many, many girls went back. Yeah. yeah. Many girls went back to their country. It was a, it was a hard country to go to. Yeah. Especially when you came into the into the country, not in the city. But when I came, I came in the country, and I asked to go to the bathroom yeah, at night, that, and that. I was taken to an outside toilet. <laughs> yes. yeah. I, I, I really, I was lucky. First of all, I left I know. London to yes, you with this. Halifax. A man was waiting for me in Halifax. No, I was by myself. Yeah. So yeah. Many people on the ship. Few could speak a few words of English. Yeah. Maybe okay. I could speak maybe ten. They should speak only two. But anyway, the nurse says. Was it? I could talk English because they talk English. I, I learned English at school. Okay. Yeah. And you so didn't have to. Yeah, it's good. I was not fluently in English, but I mean, I could make myself understood. Yeah. That's right. I was there. How can you explain? The situation when the war is on, and you're only you're not moving, you're not going out, you don't, you're not going to have that. Uh, you know what I mean? She, I, did you, did you tell me something about the jewelry that you you went missing? I thought you mentioned that about your dad had given you jewelry, and they did the the German soldiers take many things from your home, right? Uh, not uh, where I live. Not where you live. In a smaller place, the smaller village, you know, okay. they went with anything, jewelry, gun, uh, soap. I remember there was, uh, my uncle, one uncle used to live in downtown with the village. And uh, one of them, his daughter was getting married in a month or so. And she was getting uh, a pair of nylon or bubble perfume or soap. Precious thing. Precious. So you used to keep it with you. The soldiers, the German were leaving. They were leaving a day or two before that. They happened that they were leaving, but before leaving, they went through the village and they stopped by one of my uncles. And, and went in and everything. Everything from your uncle? My uncle. And they found the nightlaw, they took the 
and, and the girl of course after that cried that she lost everything. She was like a everything that was precious to her. Heirlooms. Her, you see, they didn't come over with a lot of heirlooms. Yes, yeah, yeah. I remember we were on a farm and then I was cooking on a on a can, you know, they, they make a hole in the farm, the 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 burn coal and you you make keep it the high coffee because you have to you don't have a stove in it and you just do whatever you you can use it, you see. You were resourceful. They could, yeah. <laughs> yes. And, and, yes, yes. and then the, the soldier went by and they took the chicken, they took the pig, and whatever else, bread made, or anything that they could do, jewelry, if you had anything else, almost as a take your chin, take your teeth, hard to be no more the wall was So the pair, so she was told that she had to hide, yes. many of them had to hide their jewelry and holes in the walls and, and jewelry because they would the Germans would use, the German soldiers would so use that for equity, they for money to buy ammunition. Or, and Brittany, can I ask, this town you're from, can you spell that for us? A-M-E-R-S-F-O-O-R-T. What's that? Did you get that, John? A M E R S F O O R T. I Do you know what they just told me? These lovely people may be going right there. The honor for I'm going to check. Sean, stop check. The principal that's leading the troops. He's going to check and we're going to find out and maybe if there's anything you need us to do for you or 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 places you want us to visit or something you might want us to bring back, some little treat, I'm sure that can be arranged. Yeah. Right? Right? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. But wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but there's nobody there anymore that I know though. <laughs> oh. 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 Can you give me some money? Oh, yeah. Do you want a ball? And they could see the enemy coming? And oh. I don't know what kind of ammunition they had in those days. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. They didn't have guns probably in those days. But anyway, they. And they were. People were short people. Because when my daughter was over there and she was nine years old, she was as tall as what those people were at that time. She could look through the hole. So the people were only short in those days. <laughs> And now the people in Holland are known as the short, the tallest people in Europe. Mm -hmm. Oh, you learned yeah. something about it. The tallest people in Europe. I told you you were tall when I took you out to yeah, but I'm not tall like the other ones, good people. <laughs> <laughs> I grow like the cow's tail down. <laughs> <laughs> You're shrinking. <laughs> oh, oh. Wow. Nice. Because they had an other one gate on the other side of town oh, and on the sides yeah. so that nobody could get in. Emily couldn't get in. Yeah. And there were canals. There were the canals. As of right now, we're staying in that. In that town. That that oh. that. Now they might change things, but right now it looks like we're staying in that. We're going to have to. Oh, no. we're gonna have to uh, you're quite the celebrity, Brittany, because they're they're going back to trace the footsteps footsteps of where you were as a young girl. Okay, I'm for Yeah, yeah. But, uh, in that's the province of Utrecht. In the province. Okay. In the province of Utrecht. Utrecht is the capital of what the province of Utrecht. But I lived about oh, I don't know twenty kilometers from there, maybe. Are you the only? Person in your family that came to Canada? No. Everybody. Are you the only person that came to Canada in your family? Oh, no, my family, yes. So no other sisters that met, met no, a, no, a, the love of their no, life? No. No, 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 Advisors 2019, we'd like to make a little presentation for uh, allowing us to learn about some of the history of your countries. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much.
Absolutely. Yeah, they're going to be your chaperones for the night. The girls are going to be chaperones for the night. We're going to get a picture. Is that OK? 